Hi there and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. This is The Country Life and I am starting in on making the freezer meals. These are the crock pot freezer meals that I put together with my oldest daughter. Uh, she has a family of her own and we still are really strongly affected by the um, haze from the from the Canadian wildfires and so if you hear Joe um, clearing his throat and sniffing in the background that's what that is. So we put together a whole bunch of crock pot freezer meals every single thing we put into a Ziploc bag and now I'm just starting to get those out I want to show you guys kind of how they cook up let you give you any pointers tips things like that if you didn't already see that video where we put everything together i will link to that i'll make like a little card up here i'll also link to it in the description box below you're going to want to go and check that out so you can see all the ingredients that we put into the bag it's already 138 these i just took out of the freezer and they are rock hard. So I have savory meatballs, low four to six hours. I'm going to have to put this on high. I'm hoping on high that three hours is going to be sufficient. So let's make this happen. Now don't push any buttons. We got, we have to keep the, that red dot has to still be going. Okay, very good. Joe is behind the camera. So here's what I have, a four or a four and a half quart crock pot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut the bag off here. And I, how come we now over here, Joe? Oh, I'm gonna have to cut some more. We're gonna get this cut right off and into the crock pot, just like that. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the cover on, down a little bit low, there you go, just like that. I'm gonna set this to high and we're gonna let that go. Hopefully this is ready in time for supper tonight. I think it was about 1.38 if I remember right when I put these in on high. It's now 4.48 and I just came in and I stirred these around because what happens as the ketchup and everything thaws, it actually gets, it looks kind of like clumpy. But as soon as I stirred it, it all stirred in. So I was just kind of mixing these around here a little bit. They are steaming. Um, Warren is actually um, applying fertilizer today, so it could be late before he gets in. I mean, they are steaming, but I do think... Actually, they're probably hot all the way through. <laughs> well, we are serving up our meatballs with some buttered noodles and some corn. No corn! I have grapes as well as instant mashed potatoes. Looks good, Joe. You gonna take some mashed potatoes? You want more? Yes. And some grapes? Looks good. Not sure if you remember from the freezer meal putting together <laughs> video, but we made the cheesy chicken potato broccoli freezer meal. It was something I just found on Pinterest looking for something that was a little different than just the norm and this one was definitely different. And when we were putting it together Emily and I were a little unsure about the whole using raw potatoes. It said red potatoes, slice them thin, put them right into the freezer bag. The comments on it all said that it was going that it seemed to work out fine but Emily has actually already done this freezer meal and she said that the potatoes turned black. So I'm going to cut this bag off. It's still frozen. I'm gonna fit it into my crock pot here and we are gonna see what happens to these potatoes. She also said that this was pretty bland and that it definitely needed a lot more seasoning. The recipe also called for some Velveeta cheese cubed up. Um, this obviously got a little bit smashed, but this is the Velveeta. I'm just going to let this sit on the counter until it thaws. Here's what it all looks like in here. I'm going to set my crock pot to high and I will be watching it carefully after about two hours because I don't want to overcook the chicken. And you know how chicken breast can get. Did we do chicken breast or is, are those chicken thighs? 
I'm having a hard time. I think those might actually be chicken thighs, but um, yeah, so after a couple of hours and it has some time to kind of thaw down, I'll probably come in and mix it up a little bit and maybe even add some extra salt and pepper at that time since I already had the heads up from Emily that this needs some serious seasoning. I've been having a super afternoon outside and then I realized, oh my goodness, I need, I need to go check on the chicken and it is boiling. So I just turned it down to low, and so far, you guys, um, I am having okay luck with my potatoes. It may be because I had the option of stirring it halfway, like as it was starting to thaw, and I was able to get those potatoes under the liquid. Um, whoop, there's a brown one. Okay. Uh, but so far, I would say that it's going pretty well. I like the gravy that it's creating here. I haven't tasted it yet. I think I'm going to just let a little bit of that cool and give that a taste. Oh, I got steamy, steamy. And then at some point here, I will put the Velveeta cheese in, but not yet, because I don't think we're going to be ready to eat until probably about 5.30 or so. Okay, I just tasted that little bit on the spoon there. I think it has plenty of salt and pepper, so... That's just what it started with. I know that earlier I said I was going to salt and pepper it like as it was thawing. I didn't because then I just had that thought, you know, I better just wait until I'm able to get a taste of it. And since the, the chicken is cooked through at this point, I gave that a taste and um, I think it's great. I think it has uh, plenty of salty flavor. I can taste that. Um, I'm pretty sure there's Worcestershire sauce in there. I can taste kind of that savoriness of it. And so far, so good. Okay. morning everybody we have to be out the door very very early this morning and so I have this freezer meal here and I have my crock pot ready this is completely frozen I'm just gonna cut the bag right off of this sorry for those crazy shadows right now but we have kind of the lights turned down low good morning Maria Sweater. thank you um, I just wrote on there two cups of water so I'm just gonna cut the bag off get it in here two cups of water low and we're going to be out the door and when we get home for supper tonight i'll probably um we'll pull out some buns or some bread or maybe i'll make rice it just kind of depends on what we're all feeling at that point okay yeah okay bye Shove that down so it fits in that burr. That is cold. Go right to the guys. We can write the and then we go numbers up to a million, and then. Yep. There we go. I don't know if you guys know this, but I absolutely love clothes. I love shoes, and I have not been shy about this before, that I love Goodwill clothes. I also love high-end clothes, and I have started working with Stitch Fix. I actually purchased my first two fixes in October and November. My very favorite pair of jeans are from my Stitch Fix stylist. You saw that burgundy shirt I was wearing recently in a video with the sheer sleeves. Absolutely love that. And so I became an affiliate for Stitch Fix and I received this beautiful winter coat. I've been wearing this to church. I've been wearing it to town. It just seems to elevate my outfit. It makes me feel a little bit more put, not just a little bit, but a lot bit put together. And I've been pairing it even with these Sperry boots. These are so comfortable. They're like wearing tennies, but yet they're boots. And although we have not really had any snow, much snow to speak about this year, I know that that snow is coming here in January. These boots are, are just going to be my go-to. I know it. I've been wearing them 
every single day I go to town. If you feel like you're just getting in a style slump or a style frump, check out Stitch Fix. Uh, you can use my code that's in the description box below if you'd like, and you can get 25% off your first fix as long as you keep all five items that your stylist picks for you. And that will be the first link in the description box below. Well, we are home, and let me show you the Philly cheesesteak. It smells so good. It is just kind of bubbling away here. I've had it on low, like I said, since seven o'clock this morning. I'm just taking the lid off of it for the first time. No, that's the second time because when I got home, I checked it and I kind of spread the vegetables out. Oh, it's still foggy. There we go. I made a little slurry with some cornstarch and cold water. I'm just gonna kind of stir that in a little bit here. Splash, that was hot. I decided I'm gonna make rice. I'm gonna do it in the Instant Pot again. Last time Warren really liked that in the Instant Pot. It kind of made a little bit of a, I guess what I would almost call like a sticky rice. Yeah, I'm gonna let that stay on low. It's only like, I, I think, did I tell you it's like 10 after four? And we probably won't eat until 5.30. So that'll have time to kind of like come back, bubble up a little bit, cook that cornstarch flavoring out and turn into a gravy. And then we're gonna serve that over the rice. All right, I was just vacuuming and so that sometimes makes my eyes water because of the dust. And I'm not really sure what's going on, but I've been using that little um, vacuum, rechargeable vacuum, which I, I do have to say, it doesn't have the greatest suction, um, but it always sucks up the sand and the dust and whatever. And every single time I vacuum, I get an entire canister full of like, fuzzy, sandy, crummy, whatever mess that I empty out. So I do like the fact that I can see what I am sucking up off the floor and I know that I'm actually getting the junk off the floor. All right, that has nothing to do with today. We have another uh, full day ahead of us and you know, and I'm gonna be making one of my freezer meals. I'm gonna get in into the crock pot here. But I was just thinking the other day how I was feeling kind of, hey Peter, I was feeling kind of, I don't know what it exactly, kind of feeling bad that I wasn't using my freezer meals. I think maybe it was June that we made those uh, freezer meals and I wasn't using them as fast as I thought that I was going to and I thought maybe I would use them at Cranberry Harvest and then I just didn't. And now here I am, I used one earlier this week and I'm gonna use one today. So I am so happy that I have these because yeah, it is just gonna be a full day. Uh, I'm gonna be gone with Amber. Then I'm gonna meet the family in town. Then we're gonna zip back home for some supper. And then we're gonna head up to the Christmas lights, the, the rotary Christmas lights. And there just would not be any time for making something when we get home. So crock pot meal for the win. So this is marinated Italian chicken. This recipe is in one of the cookbooks, you guys. It's in one or two. I'm kind of thinking it's in number two. And it has like mayo and Italian dressing and garlic, I think. I can't remember everything, but this is really, really tasty. It's really good too if you want to thaw it and then do like a quick fry on the black stone or something or the grill. It works really well like that. But I'm going to use my crock pot today because that's just going to be the best for us. So I'm just going to cut this bag right off, plop everything into the crock pot, set it to low, and it's going to go on the low setting. I only want it to go for six would be the max amount of time because I notice that sometimes my crock pot seem a little bit hot. So I don't think I'm going to get it started quite yet because it's 9.30 that would take us to 3.30. Yeah, there's no way that we'll be eating by 3.30. So we probably won't be eating until 4.30-ish. So I'm going to adjust my 
time accordingly. So I guess it's not quite time to get that in there. But now we have to go to school, so I won't be getting back to film uh, when I dump this in. But rest assured, I'm going to use scissors, snip, snip, and dump. That is adorable. So it's kind of a tradition after the lights, the Christmas lights, do a little Christmas shopping. So we pick, we're picking up some chocolate stars for making peanut blossoms and Peter has to buy a birthday present and this is what he's trying to talk me into. <laughs> just I just a machete. Come That's with it. With the sheath and with the a sheath. saw. Yeah. Just just a machete, huh? Okay, well we'll see. Hey there's a smaller but more expensive one. Yeah, no that's too expensive. Well, for today, I'm going to actually make a new soup. I do have a couple of chicken and rice soups in my cookbooks. I'm pretty sure that they, well, I'd have to look to see if they're in cookbook one or two, um, but I did find another chicken and rice recipe that I'd like to make. I just have to go over to the living room here because that is where it is. And let me show you something. Okay, remember I bought that rug I said I wanted to bring some green in and it just was not it was not right at all so anyway um, a friend of mine I who's really good at all this interior design kind of stuff uh, I had asked her if she could give me some options and this was one of them that she gave me an option for she doesn't know this yet uh, but I went with the oval one just because I always want to try something and just see the tree was already in place so we really, we just plopped it over top just so I could at least get a feel for if I liked the coloring in here. And I absolutely love this one. This is just called, I think, something like Ivory and Brown. And it's very soft, but it might be very soft because there's another rug under it. I'm not sure. Anyway, after Christmas, hi, Joe. Hi. <laughs> this is a close up. Is Blue Peasant. Which blue present? And blue one. Oh, back there. And mine. That is a blue present back there. That one's pretty, and that one's really pretty, it too, is mine. isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure if that's for you or not. So I was looking through this cookbook last night, Flour and Grace, and I found a recipe in here for a chicken and rice soup, and I just thought, I'm going to give that one a try. I should probably compare it to mine and see just how close it is to it. I'll do that in a minute. And the cookbook author actually requests that uh, the recipes in here not be shared um, online, like written down or anything like that, or pictures of uh, the recipe. So I'll still kind of walk you guys through here what I'm doing. First up, I'm going to be making some chicken here. So I have some thawed chicken breasts. Are those not enormous? I don't know where they get these, where these chickens are from, but okay. I'm gonna put just a little bit of olive oil over each one. I'm gonna salt each one. They turn on my oven to 400. Pepper. I'm gonna do a little bit of garlic powder. And a little bit of onion powder. Oop, that's got a clump. There we go. Whoop. That was a lot. 
And then once the oven preheats to 400 degrees, I'm gonna put this in for probably 25 minutes. These are some pretty thick chicken breasts, so I'll just check them. I wanna make sure that they are 165, right? Once they reach the temp, I'll take them out, let them cool just a little bit, and then I'm gonna like chop this up into small pieces. And since I have some time here today to get into the kitchen, I also brought up the, everything here is still rock, rock solid frozen. <laughs> but I thought that these two packs of mini roasts, venison, that I would uh, let these thaw a bit and then slice them. Tomorrow I'll do a Swiss steak, like in the crock pot with gravy, that kind of thing. And then I also brought up, this is ground beef and this is ground venison. And I think I'm just gonna mix those two and make some barbecue. I don't know what night this week we're gonna have the barbecue, but I think that um, that would just be a good thing to have on hand. It's quick to heat up, you know, when you're having busy nights. Well, what do you guys think? Am I still going to be able to pull up my carrots and use them? It is less than a week. Well, it's like a week to Christmas. You can see we have no snow. Well, there's one sticking out. Still seems great. Oh, that one, kind of a funky little one. Oh boy, oh, that one is stuck. I feel like that is gonna be my problem. Getting these out, oh shoot, without them breaking. Well, I didn't bring down anything to dig, so that's kind of a problem. Oh, look at that, it's just the top, that's it. That's all that's frozen of the ground. Otherwise, it's completely. Oh my gosh. I gotta set the camera down. Oh, look at that carrot. There's my hand. That is a huge carrot. All right, well, I'm just gonna My camera was turned off, so honestly, I don't know if it was turned on when I was first talking or not. It's so cold out today and windy, and yeah, I didn't bring a, I didn't bring a basket down. I didn't bring anything, so my hands are kind of tied up here. I can't do a whole, I can't, I can't check if I've, if I caught that first filming or not on camera. I have one last container of bread mix here. I make these up ahead of time so that I have everything, all the dry ingredients all ready to go. And this time when I put these all together, I did the 60 minute mini white loaf, but I'm just doing it like a regular bread in my bread machine. So that is the milk and water in there. I do have to put in a little bit of butter and some honey. There's the dry ingredients. I have to get the cover on. <laughs> it still works even though the cover is broken. And set it to the dough cycle. So over on the stove I have the ground beef and ground venison kind of like warming on the stove here so that I can start uh, scraping it and getting that browned. I have over here simmering, although it's sure, sure steaming even on low, but I have the, the wild rice is in there. I have some extra brown rice here because the chicken and wild rice soup recipe calls for three cups of wild rice and I don't have 
quite enough, so I just am substituting in a little bit of brown rice, which now is going to make it even more like the recipe that I already have in my cookbook. Uh, but this one's a little different because it has oregano and chili powder, and that was a, a different a different seasoning than any of my recipes that I already have. So we're gonna we're going with it. The chicken at 25 minutes was not quite done. It was only uh, reading 150 degrees. So I have that in for another 10 minutes and I'll check it at that time. I'm turning this off now at this point. It's plenty hot. I just tasted it for seasoning. I went a little bit lighter on the salt than the recipe called for because I didn't have like a chicken stock that wasn't, you know, real salty. I, I used the chicken soup base. Um, so I did a little bit less salt and yeah, it tastes very good. I do have brown rice here yet that I made because I thought that I would need some more rice, but I actually think it's a good consistency. I want it to actually be soup-like. So I'm gonna leave it like that and not put in any extra rice. So that extra rice that I did make, the brown rice, can be something that the kids have for lunch tomorrow. I can add it to something else this week. It's not gonna go to waste. I've made the Pioneer woman recipe for sloppy joes uh, many 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 times i am not going to walk you guys through that or anything but you can check out her website for the recipe if you have her cookbook food from my frontier that's the that's the cookbook that you'll find it in on page 58 so at this point i'm just going to let the barbecue um, simmer away i have my soup over here I'm just getting my two packages of venison mini roasts into the refrigerator. I'm gonna let those thaw overnight so that tomorrow morning they're still, I want them to be a little bit icy. They just will slice really easily that way. And then I will pound them out and turn those into some Swiss steak. 
the bread machine just beeped. So I'm gonna get this shaped and into a loaf pan so that it can rise. Uh, it's just about two hours until supper time and so that's gonna give me plenty of time to let this rise. This usually takes a good 45 minutes, sometimes even longer. ready to put together the venison Swiss steak and you can see that it well maybe maybe you can't see because maybe the camera's not gathering it but it's a lot easier to cut the meat when it's still a little bit icy that one's got a little bit of something I don't want So I'm just kind of slicing it probably in about three eighths inch thick pieces. Swiss steak for supper tonight because this is what tenderizes the meat. Have you ever? All right, so you can pan down here, Peter. So I just did the first batch in bacon grease, quick fried it up, and while that was quick frying, Ew. I was getting the other package because I was doing two packages of the mini roasts. I got that one sliced up. And the reason I do it with a plate like this is just because this is what my grandma did. And so I've just always done it this way. I'm sure there's lots of other ways to do it, but this works for me. And it's kind of therapeutic too, just kind of pounding out the meat. And I don't know, I guess, <laughs> not that I'm saying I have anger issues or anything, but it is therapeutic to pound this out. Um, Okay, Peter, you can show what the meat looks like in the crock pot now. Okay, Peter, talk. And then Peter is going to put in a couple of bay leaves in there. All right, so this is what I'm doing. I explained it before, but I just wanted to get some quick video for you guys to see. I, I don't overpack the cast iron skillet here you just want to you want to leave some space i just added some water here so i could loosen up all the bits i only do that if i don't have any burnt on flour sometimes if i if my my like assembly line doesn't go quite as i'd like i end up burning a little bit of the flour then i do not add water and loosen those bits but this time i didn't burn anything and so i added water loosen the bits i'm going to get this poured over meat here this smells so good you guys i just want to eat this right now actually you could i mean this is cooked enough it's a little bit rare in the center but um at this point you could actually cook it or you could actually eat it this is something like let's say you wanted to make um some quick sandwiches or something you could do it like this and then just quick serve it up on like toast with some gravy or something oh that would be good too but okay uh, I'm gonna slow cook it so it gets really like fall apart tender here today Oh, 
Looks really good, Joe. Looks really good. Let's start spinning, okay? You're gonna keep spinning. Thank you. One, two, three. Thank you.